Hi folks, Daniel Bob here in a new park. Welcome to Vembray Park. Uh, still in early access in prehistoric kingdom. And uh, I decided this park I'm going to do a little bit of a different take on how I'm going to build things uh, in terms of laying it out and what animals come in when. This is a sandbox park and uh, that means all the animals are fair game from the start. So, um, as a starting thing, I eliminated the entrance. Uh, this is the tropical map. And as I pan over there, you'll see I've already done some terraforming and put in a little bit of groundwork to set up the very basics. Um, much like building a uh, challenge park, you often put in the bare minimums just to get things going. That's less crucial in this park. Uh, but I did put in a visitor entrance and uh, built this wall for a uh, retaining wall and uh, sort of a barrier wall should animals escape uh, for this part of the park. Keep them out of the entrance area and uh, a bridge across, uh, very crude at this point, just enough to let the guests walk. Same thing for the ticket entrance. Um, just the bare bones of the functional things and the space for my handicapped access. Uh, which isn't actually functional. So built a path through some rocks and uphill to a, another small bridge. Um, and again, just the basics, just the walkway. Uh, because I have laid in uh, the habitat markers for a habitat. And uh, let's get around to uh, laying that out for our animals. Uh, our first animal. Uh, even though it's a sandbox park, we're going to go with a pretty basic first animal. It's, it'll be Setakasaurus. I like to pick him because of that fabulous uh, specimen that the, one of the skins is actually based on, the, the red-brown skin, which we'll be using here. Uh, remarkably uh, fine preservation and uh, down to the melanosomes, which means they've got a good idea of what color range the animal's colors were in and a little bit of how they may have been present on the animal's body. Um, so a lot of information on that. Therefore, in my head canon anyway, this is um, the kind of information they need to recreate the animals, at least in the early stages of what paleogenes can do. Uh, for those of you who are late to the party, paleogenes is my uh, fictional company that uh, made the breakthrough to bring the dinosaurs back. So all of my parks, uh, so far anyway, have been paleogene parks. And uh, so I'm messing with the terrain layout again. Put the animals in so I could check where they can go and made sure I wanted to fix things so they didn't get out past the rocks um, and uh, change fences so that uh, the places where I want guests to be able to see them or that are on the back side of the exhibit are uh, keeping the animals from going out, which the habitat markers don't do. Uh, so I put four of them in, one male, three females, uh, which is pretty much my, my go-to, lacking any better information on what kind of group sizes they're going to want, uh, particularly for the herbivores. Um, anyway, um, so taking all the plants out to get a fresh start because this animal seems to like coastal and doesn't like tropical uh, and it's a tropical uh, base park so uh, the vegetation doesn't make the animal happy and with the vegetation out I can um, start doing uh, ground coloration after having put in some of those necessary rocks uh, and for this build I decided to you know uh, do the whole exhibit area out in one tone and then bring it back from that. Uh, the animals need water so I picked one so I could see um, what its needs were and started laying out uh, a pond for them to drink from. Uh, this is as you come into the park um, the uh, right side of the exhibit? Left side of the exhibit. Um, and, uh, and so there's a little elevated pond there in the back of the exhibit. Um, You'll find out later that uh, it wasn't quite enough to keep these guys happy. So I put in a second pond on the other side. Uh, so uh, a lot of coastal vegetation going in. Uh, my usual ammo of uh, 
rushing the bunch down and then uh, adjusting their positions um, because even though it has improved it's very easy for the game to lay down a ton of uh, plants if you don't move that cursor fast enough or can't get your finger off fast enough um, and uh, aside from that producing a lot of pieces to make your computer run slower uh, it um, isn't always the most aesthetic um, and it's also very easy to overload your animals with their plant needs and the exhibit looks empty uh, because the plants are so densely packed. Um, using bracken uh, near the uh, water areas, um, it's a moisture loving uh, fern type thing and uh, uh, rather than, than reeds or uh, cattails, just to, or horsetails for that matter to be just you know a little bit different feel for this one um, you can see the animals can go under the bridge um, to the two halves of their exhibit and uh, that uh, give the guests a little bit of immersion feeling in the habitat I will be building a care building I don't think that will happen on camera and uh, you know, um, I'm probably going to crib one from another park, at least as the basis for it. Um, but, uh, you know, even for a small animal like this, these habitats, if you're being fussy about what you want it to look like, you'll be spending a lot of time uh, messing around with tw Yeah, tweaking, lots of tweaking, uh, things like rocks, uh, slopes, uh, foliage locations, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you probably noticed I built a little uh, rock overhang and put some hay underneath there. Uh, some days the animal will, some day, excuse me, the animals will use those to bed down on instead of just sort of dropping wherever they feel like it all over the map. Um, but uh, not yet. Uh, so uh, you saw the menu pop up because I found out that they could take some more foliage and since these seem to have been forest dwelling animals uh, I wanted it to look um, you know, pretty heavily vegetated um, and yet still have open areas for the guests to see the animals. Um, you can see me playing with uh, some obviously tropical trees and that is to um, uh, provide some shade onto the exhibit like canopy trees would for the forest and uh, yet not uh, get them into the exhibit to drive the animals into uh, foliage overload. Um, so the Speedville has shifted now to uh, making that uh, bridge look a little more neat, um, starting with putting uh, support rails underneath the uh, planks to uh, support them, um, and then a bamboo structure uh, up above to provide railings uh, as you're seeing here for the guests and to keep them from falling into the uh, exhibit uh, by accident obviously they could jump over that um, but we're assuming our guests are uh, reasonably well behaved um, I think it doesn't get into this video but uh, I came back and put uh, screen mesh below that railing uh, to for those accidental falling ends um, and uh, so I wanted this to have a little bit of something more than just rails across a walkway uh, so this little bit of work with the longer bamboo to set up an area where I can uh, put up some a little bit of sunshade for the guests and just like uh, the choice of the animal uh, as normally in early early game challenge animal since it's a one star uh, this exhibit I wanted to keep simple um, you know beyond the terrain and you know to a certain degree you can imagine a lot of this terrain was already in place and the park builders are taking advantage of it to create this particular style of exhibit um, but the bridge itself which would be a construct relatively simple therefore relatively cheaper uh, and uh, cheap is important in the challenge games at the beginning when you don't have a lot of budget 
Um, I want to save that for the cool stuff. Well, at least I do. Um, you know, mileage may vary. Uh, so um, the bamboo is fun to work with. Uh, like a lot of these linear columnar props, they all seem to show up a little off skew from the grid. Um, I don't know if it's because I place the my uh, base building grid at, off from the uh, world grid, um, but uh, I've seemed to have noticed it even when I'm building on the world grid that you know they're not square with the grid, and as soon as you try to um, you know slide them along, they start slanting off somewhere. Uh, so these are the simple tarps going in now. Uh, obviously, I decided blue was not appropriate. Uh, for this stage, um, one oh I am no no I'm going to put in this, the view screen here and build its own surround because um, uh, while I was building this uh, the pre-build uh, screens for the animals were being pretty buggy and uh, occasionally blowing up uh, saves and I was not in the mood for that. Um, one of the things you may notice on the fencing is uh, a uh, glitch that uh, leaves a, a metallic pole there when the habitat markers go away and change to a low regular fence. And I'm just assuming there's some kind of monitor poles, so I'm not fretting about it right now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so we're in um, a little bit more cinematic walkthrough of the bridge. You can see our animals underneath there. Um, one coming toward us. Their little uh, place to take naps which they've so far been ignoring very uh, completely. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, put in, I think, two, two feeding points uh, for them, plus a termite mount. Uh, since for enrichment, these guys will take the fruit box of ice and uh, the termite mounts. Um, even though I think termites are pretty scarce on the ground when these guys were around. Um, Maybe they just mistake them for some contemporary uh, mound-building insect that's tasty. Um, I don't know. You'll have to ask them, not my department. Um, so uh, a little more atmospheric shots of a couple of the animals. Um, and uh, we'll be coming up to the end of today's video uh, in a little bit. Um, the next one... Um, I'm going to uh, have done some stuff in between. Um, I've been watching video numbers, even though people haven't commented. Um, it's pretty clear I get more views when there's a habitat involved uh, than when I'm just building structures for my park. Uh, I certainly enjoy doing that, but uh, maybe they're just not as interesting for people to watch. Um, or maybe I just get more videos because the people who want to watch the animals and the people who want to watch the builds all get together and watch a video. Uh, the mysteries of YouTube. <laughs> anyway, um, so Sitakasaurus is here. They seem to be happy. Their numbers are all in their hundreds so far. So, very nice uh, habitat for them. And uh, we're going to go for something bigger next time. Uh, thank you all for stopping by. It's time for Sitakasaurus to go to sleep and probably ought to be time for Dino Bob to go to sleep. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, drop a like or a comment. These things help a lot in terms of getting traction on the uh, video for the general public. You all be kind to each other out there and uh, I should be back next week with another video. Take care.